for as long as I can remember. I've always listened to music from the 1920s, really badly recorded music, right? <laughs> as well as Dylan and all the rest of the stuff that I love. So as soon as I got the chance in the late 90s, at the end of the run of Catatonia, I left to follow the music of the Irish and the Scottish and the Welsh and the English over the Atlantic to where they ended up in America. I, w I just wanted to come here and see where the Europeans landed and where it mixed with the Africans who landed here and how it changed the music. So, and that's why I'd come back, because I love the music. I love, I love music made by people, not, not for the marketing man, essentially. And, and, and America is so rich, it's such a rich theme of that kind of music. Mississippi John Hurt, Snook Siegelin, you know, it just goes on and on and on. It's great music. This is a brilliant record, we've got that one. This is the best corner, I think. Screaming Jay Hawkins. He did, um, I Put a Spell on You, and he apparently recorded that and then woke up the following morning and couldn't even remember laying the vocal in, you know, laying the vocals down because he was so drunk. And if you listen to the track, you're like, oh my gosh, it's out of this world scary, isn't it? Because he was out, out of it. <laughs> Is that a Mississippi record up there? What is that one? <laughs> Angry Mom Records. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how are things going in Nashville? It seems to be absolutely thriving. I mean, Nashville's so, doing great. It's, it's going through, you know, I mean, it has been for quite a while, but it's really got this sort of boom town, you know, vibe to it. Yeah. And uh, we have been doing really well. Um, a lot of people ask me sometimes, like, how's your record shop doing so well with everything going on, whether it's the economy or the music business yeah, and digital? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, one of my first responses is always, well, Nashville is a big part of it. Yeah. There's such a great town, such a great music town to, to have a record store. We're at the Ryman Auditorium, formerly known as the Union Gospel Tabernacle. It was a church, it was an expensive church built by Thomas Ryman, who was a riverboat captain. And in order to help the little coffers of the church, um, it was a venue. Houdini played here, uh, we had Charlie Chaplin playing here, and the broadcast for the radio programme that is the Grand Old Opry began in 1943 to broadcast from the Ryman Auditorium. This is really the mother church of country music is what they refer to it as. Hank Williams played here and he used to sneak out by all accounts to get a little drink in Tootsie's Bar where, where we're going to go in a minute um, between her shows and um, that's, a, that's a lovely story too. So much history and a great sounding venue. Well howdy. Welcome to Nashville and world famous Tootsie. You just took the magic 37 steps from right across from the back door of the Ryman to, to right here, world so, famous Tootsies. So it's 37 steps. 37, absolutely. unless you're Jimmy Dickens and it's. Yes, and it's about 62. Uh, 62. He's little, isn't he's, he? Yes, ma'am. And well, this, this is where the, they. This is one of the favorite places that people have come in, the artists from the stage door into. They would run over here in the early days and still do and come back and, yeah. and between sets. Ten a.m. till two thirty at night. And you've got live music all the time. Two bars, two bands, all the time. Is that logistically difficult, or are, are people just begging to come and play? In the beginning, it was difficult to have people to come down here. Now, there, I get up two hundred emails a day. People want to come to Nashville to become the next, you know, Carrie Underwood. Or does it have to be kind of country music, or can anybody play them? No? Well, I like country. We, we, we call it honky tonkin'. You know, it's, it's, it's country with a rock and roll edge. It's only a three and a half hour drive from Nashville to Memphis on one road. And because they're so distinct, because they're almost like yin and yang, you know, the, the two contrasting things. You've got the white country, highly 
organized, very successful business center of Nashville compared to Memphis, which is a lot more complicated, a lot more mixed, and not such a good track record with, with business. So it makes it a really, really interesting trip. And it's always good to have some great records on. So I've had um, Johnny B. Good on, I've had like Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones, and just uh, some good old, good rock and roll, soulful rock and roll on the way to Memphis. This was um, this was pretty much the heart of South Memphis. You know, I mean, of course, we call this neighborhood Soulsville because the, a lot of a lot of the original talent that was signed to Stacks Records came straight from this neighborhood. David Porter lived here in the neighborhood. Isaac Hayes lived in the neighborhood. Uh, of course, you mentioned um, Aretha Franklin, Rufus and Carla Thomas. They lived in the neighborhood. When this building was demolished. A lot of people were kind of starting to forget the Stax legacy. You know what I mean, they may they know, they may know the music that came from here, but they didn't associate it with here. They didn't associate it with Macklemore Avenue. Yeah, yeah. You know, so they wanted to capitalize on what the essence and the legacy of what Stax Records was and what it is. So they said, well, let's let's put a music academy in, the, in that location. But then they came up with an idea to start a foundation. we're trying to do here um, with the students is give, we're also fostering a sense of pride, you know, in yeah, terms of them being able to claim, you know, something that their grandfather and their great grandfathers helped to birth into Absolutely. this nation. And so it comes from the African American aesthetic and we, when we focus on that, that's because it's, it's amazing. You know? You know, we're performing at B.B. King's Restaurant, one of the biggest legends when it comes to, you know, to, to blues music, and we're performing in the original B.B. King's Restaurant. Memphis is a musical mecca. Yes, it is. Yeah. Incredible heritage, incredible history. What about the future? Are we going to go? I hope, I hope that it would be, be looking good. If, if we still have programs like this going, I think that Memphis, musically wise, it would, it would be, be thriving. The route linking Nashville and Memphis is known as Music Road, and I often wish it would work as an artery, bringing nutrients lacking in one to the other. Memphis remains in Nashville's shadow, but you sense that this underdog has a swagger that Nashville can never have. I leave Beale Street with a spring in its step and a spring in my step, with fingers firmly crossed for the future of this great city.